that decision to remove the tax from heating oil is one of many where we've got into these conversations of we're going to exempt this emission and this sector and this. So it's it's not just heating oil. It's farm fuels, purple gas, barn heat, whatever you want to call it, that we've had these conversations over and over again. And it erodes the basic premise of carbon pricing and why economists like it is we don't want governments making those decisions we want to step back and say a government's never going to be able to decide that you can bike to work and you can't or you need a car and you don't or your emissions in one region are more valuable than others um, so i really don't like governments getting in and picking and choosing it undermines the whole system but to me the fundamental miss and i mentioned it in answer to one of jerry's questions here was the way it's talked about, if, if you're looking for a policy to help lower income Canadians, right, you do not subsidize fuel because fundamentally, the, you know, you look at the distribution and who spends money on fuel, the spending is lar larger house, the larger your fuel bill. Right. The more other things that you have, your steam showers, your hot tub, your whatever the case may be, the larger is your fuel bill. And when we say we're removing the carbon price, we're giving a little bit to low income people generally and a lot to high income people. And so I think what was missed in that conversation, it was almost symptomatic of we haven't communicated the fact that truly the combination of a carbon price and a lump sum check that has some label that nobody understands, but a lump sum check is these probably along with the childcare program, the largest progress we've made on affordability issues in, um, in Canada. And I'll, I'll go back to conversations with Premier Notley, right? Progressives generally don't like energy taxes. They've always said, well, that's a regressive policy. And I remember the first conversation I had with Premier Notley about it. And I said, what if we could make it progressive? What if I could make it so that 70, 80% of Albertans would be made better off by this policy and 90 to 95% of people in the lowest, below median incomes would be made better off. That's what changed the conversation. I think that's also true federally, was Absolutely. that's the, what changed the conversation. And then we forgot about it, right? And so we have this question of, well, if you wanted to do something for affordability in Atlantic Canada, there are a bunch of things that are happening that are good. Heat pumps, rural rebates, et cetera. Sure, let's recognize that. But if you think of the government saying, we've got some resources we want to spend on something, then removing the carbon price is not a way to get to that affordability challenge. And I mean, politically, I think it just enforces what was exactly the argument that people have been incorrectly making right, about the carbon price, which is if you take that policy as a whole, you can't have one side of it without the other. If you said, if I remove that, fundamentally what happens? most people earning below median incomes in Canada are made worse off by that decision, full stop. And so if that's the road you wanna go down, that's the implication. 